Hotbot. I am your father. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Cobweb Garage. Uh, this time gonna have a look at the loop because I wanna fit an, a loop and some panels on the back of the scooter. Now, here's the loop. I got this from a friend of mine at the Bristol Lambretta Club, Gus, thanks for that. Um, it is, before any people start hating me for what I'm about to do, this loop is in a terrible state. I don't know if you can see how bad it is. It is rust everywhere. I, by the sound of it, half of it's filler. It has been welded up all over the place. It is in a right state. Can you see that massive, massive split there? So it's gonna need a lot of work. Normally, this loop would fit kind of there, but being the lanky git I am, my plan is to actually move it back a bit and have it sat lower. We can bring it down a good 50 mil before it hits any suspension bits. Uh, I'll need to trim the front of the loop. And I reckon we've got another 50 mil there we can go. So yeah, I reckon I'm gonna bring it down about 50 mil and then push it back probably another, maybe 100 mil, just so the seating position's a bit nicer. Quite like the look of uh, it sitting out past the back wheel, a bit like an old American car. Got the panels on because there's a bit more needs chopping out to make clearance. Uh, got to roughly, I think this line I need to chop to. So. And before anyone starts hating me again get the most beat up panels I could find. Holes in them, more holes. Anyway, we need to like take out a bit of this to get clearance, so here we go. Panels and see how it works. Okay, so, before we go any further with this loop, uh, I want to just offer up this fuel tank, which is off a J range, I think, Lambretta. Um, obviously the normal fuel tank is designed to fit between the frame and the loop which should be 50 mil higher so that's not going to work uh, but it's J series one so it's a shallower 
It needs to go down a little bit. You can see in there the brackets. I'm going to just take a little bit off those brackets and then it can go down just a little bit further. And possibly back a bit if I just take a little bit off there as well. You may be wondering why I feared this tank. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how long it will stay like that. But basically, the thing with this project of oh boss is that I wanted to use all land better parts where possible. I don't want to bolt on motorbike parts. I, I want to try and use like, yeah, just sort of recycle stuff really, not have loads of new stuff made for it. So that is why I've got this J-Range fuel tank at the moment. So here's the tank sat roughly in position and I've basically made these lugs up which weld to the frame, something like that. First I need to clean up that frame. Yeah, anyway, it sits in there quite well. I've just notched it round there a little bit. Okay, so I need to make a bracket for the top of the fuel tank. And I'm thinking I'm going to use a bit of this angle, cut it off, just needs to be about 100 mil, and then do a bit of a circle, cut a bit of a circle out, mount it in there. Here's the bracket knocked up at that old bit of angle and the idea is it's going to go there and the fuel tank where that is here we go it's going to go on there Side welding recently, probably only done a total of a few hours of actual welding. So it's not the best, but I've sort of ground it down a bit. It's all going to be hidden under the panels, but it is rock solid. So let's get the tank in position, drill a couple of holes. There's the fixing at the back, and two fixings at the back there. And two bolts at the front. Going back to working on the loop again, uh, and I've cut out these reinforcement angles from a bit of box section. Basically, I've got to try and get these perfectly parallel. So we're within half a mil to a mil of tolerance. I've got to clean it up anyway, so I can just tweak it a bit more. You can see with the loop, the reinforcement bits go there, but they finish. So the idea is to weld those in there to extend it down. It's all cleaned up. I'm gonna weld that one on there. One on there. Let's get the weld out. What I did notice as well, you can now wire brushed it off. You can see where these reinforcement bits are just literally spot welded in a couple of places. So I think I'll 
just put a few more welds on there as well. Strengthen those bits up. Okay, this is all bolted up together. Got some sockets on the ends just so we know they fit in there. Put a few temporary washers in just to tighten the whole thing up. So now it's perfectly parallel. about to weld in. There's not a lot of clearance there but just about there. Now you would not believe how much time I've spent trying to line this thing up. Got zero here and got point one there. But I have fiddled and fiddled and the thing as you can see is completely battered. So I'm going to put a couple of tacks on, take the loop off and just see if that vial welding is about level as well. Gypsy with the gold cap too She's got a bad down for the bumper vine Send a little boss off Love potion number nine Okay, they came out pretty good On that side What you need is Love potion number nine If you're wondering what all that welding was about, this is it. So we're going to have a flip loop. Uh, not sure whether I'm going to permanently weld the panels on yet, but anyway, that is the first stage. It's getting this thing to work. Now I've already strengthened up the bottom part of the frame here with these sort of angles on the inside, but they've got a tendency to sort of spread apart. So I spent way too long making some brackets basically to hold the thing together nice and taut. So that's one bracket there, which is gonna go in there. Now there's a reason it's gonna go at that position, which I'll show you later. Um, but also what I want to do is I made another fancy looking bracket which is going to weld actually to the main part of the frame itself. So when the loop comes down it's got something firm to sit on rather than relying just on this sort of hinge bracket. Still working on the loop for odd bod. I've decided that this bracket here is just not going to be strong enough and I could add another piece here but I want something really firm to take the weight of the, the loop when it comes down and the seat and everything so uh, time for another bracket. I've made this kind of cardboard mock-up. I, I know it looks a bit rubbish but I've spent a bit of time with the loop down to find out where it goes. So what I'm going to do is transfer this into a piece of box section. So I've just been marking that up on the box section. It's uh, time to cut it out.
I cut off this old bracket that was holding the, the loop in place. Just didn't think it was sort of meaty enough to take the weight of everything. So I've gone the opposite way, probably a bit over the top, and made up this bracket out of some fancy box section. Which is going to sit there on the frame. And then I've got some plates just slightly curved to match the frame. And I'm going to sit those. Here's the support bracket, if you like, welded onto the frame. Just going to take the weight of the person sat on the seat above. Just while I'm here, I thought I'd fix this mud guard properly in position. So I've used the existing bracket to fix the front part of my guard, drill a hole through this new bracket I've made, put a bolt centrally down there, it'll have three good fixings there, it won't go anywhere. One rear mud guard fitted. Interestingly enough you can see how much I've moved the loop back and down because that part of the mudguard would normally touch the loop. And now for something completely different. It's all uh, pleats, buttons, you need. Thanks for watching this episode of Cobweb Garage. It was a bit of a world of fun. Please don't forget to subscribe and you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Cobweb Garage. Okay, until next time, may the force be with you.